Heat transfer and enthalpy change. Chemical systems have many different forms of energy, both kinetic and potential. So potential, the, the ability to do work. Uh, kinetic energy is pretty much the actual movement of, these, uh, of the energy, right? So in terms of kinetic energies, what are we talking about? They really include the following. Moving electrons within the atom, right? The vibration of atoms connected by chemical bonds, right? So the movement of, of particles, right? And finally, the rotation and translation of molecules that are made up of these atoms. So when we're talking about rotational, translational, we are talking about movement of, of particles in terms of solids, liquids, gases, so to speak, right? So all of this deals with movement. Right? Now, more importantly, when we're looking at potential energy, we're talking about potential energy in terms of nuclear reactions, right? So the, uh, or the nuclear aspect of the atom. So, so the protons, uh, the neutrons of an atomic nucleus, uh, as well as the electric uh, potential energy of atoms that are connected by these chemical bonds, right? But don't worry too much about that. Really, we'll, we're, we're going to kind of, this more the theory aspect um, of this, but just know that when we're dealing with potential energy, you know, um, matter has the ability to move. It has the potential to do work, right? So the minute that potential starts to do work, starts to do movement, the kinetic energy is going to start to increase while the potential energy is going to start to decrease. So uh, the, heat uh, the heat content of a chemical system is referred to as Enthalpy. Researchers have not yet found a way to me measure uh, the sum of all these kinetic and potential uh, energies of a system. Okay, so what we have here is um, the reason for the reason for chemists uh, to study enthalpy change or the energy absorbed from or released from the surroundings when a system changes from reactants to products, but it's at a constant temperature or sorry, a constant pressure. So constant pressure, um, is energy gonna be released? Is it gonna be absorbed from the, from the system into the surroundings and vice versa? And enthalpy change, we're gonna use the, um, the symbol uh, delta H, is the difference in enthalpies of reactants and products during a change. So what we have here is the enthalpy change, delta H, which is really um, the enthalpy, right? The heat content of the product subtracted by the heat content of the reactants. And we're, we're looking at the overall enthalpy change of a system. It's equal to pretty much the heat of its surroundings. Okay, and we're gonna talk a little more about that um, in the next video when we're looking at molar enthalpies. So enthalpy change of a system equals the quantity of heat that flows from a system to its surroundings or the surroundings to the system, right? So really what we're looking at is in terms of enthalpy change, we wanna know is something endothermic, so energy require a lot of energy required, or is it exothermic in which um, energy is being released into the surroundings. So the idea is consistent with the law of conservation of energy. That energy may be converted from one form to another or transferred from one set of molecules to another, right? So it's being transferred from the molecules of the reactants to the molecules of the products. But the total energy of the system of the surroundings is gonna remain the same, right? And that's that whole idea of the change in enthalpy is equal to the, um, the heat of the surroundings okay so here's an example of an ex exothermic change here with this graph right this change from it so what we have here is we've got a high potential energy so if we've got a high potential energy we're going to have a low kinetic energy but now as the potential energy starts to decrease kinetic energy is going to increase okay but that difference right that difference is going to be exactly the same okay so the change of potential energy of a system delta h equals the change in the kinetic energy of the surroundings which is q so delta h represents the potential energy of the system q represents the heat of the surroundings right and this being consistent with what we said about the law of conservation of energy um, that energy is not going to be created nor is it going to be destroyed in fact energy is just going to be transferred from one system to another. Okay. 
So energy changes in chemical systems are measured at standard conditions of temperature and pressure such as, such as SATP before and after uh, the reaction. So if you're uh, stuck with uh, understanding what SATP is, standard ambient temperature and pressure, uh, please go back to my gas law unit where we kind of address the SATP and STP. So now, under such conditions, the enthalpy change of a chemical system is the change in the chemical potential energy uh, of the system because the kinetic energies of the system's molecules remain constant for now. And we're going to look at it um, in future um, videos. Okay. Now, we can observe enthalpy changes during phase changes uh, chemical reactions or nuclear reactions. So when we're talking about phase changes, we're really talking about physical changes, right? So a, a change in state. So a gas um, eva um, condensing into a liquid, a liquid freezing into a, a solid. So let's look at some types of enthalpy changes uh, with respect to physical changes, right? Changes in state. So energy is used to overcome or allow intermolecular forces to act, uh, fundamental particles remain unchanged in a molecular level, right? So if we've got here at a molecular level, H2O is still H2O in the end result. The only difference is pretty much um, is the fact that really heat is being either released or heat is being, uh, it, it needs to be input for this reaction, let's say, to take place. So if we look at this example here of water, right, of water pretty much uh, subliming and, and it's under what is sublime it's really it's undergoing sublimation right because it's going straight from a gas straight to a solid without that liquid state in between so when it does that heat is actually being released right because remember for a gas to go down to a solid the kinetic energy has to decrease right kinetic energy of these particles need to decrease Right? Because that is, you know, in order to solidify. Now, temperature changes during dissolving of pure solutes. Right? So here's an example of um, us going from a solid potassium chloride to an aqueous. Right? We're putting this, we're adding, we're, we're dissolving this in water is going to require an input of heat. Right? So all of a sudden, this is considered an endothermic reaction. Right. Now, typical enthalpy changes range in the following. So our delta H can be anywhere from 1 kilojoule per mole. Okay, kilojoule per mole to 100 kilojoules per mole. Okay, and that's a typical one for physical changes. So it's, it's very low, right? So enthalpy changes um, in physical changes is considered very low. Now, enthalpy changes and chemical changes, right? Energy changes overcome the electronic structure and chemical bonds within the particles, right? So all of a sudden, um, the reactants, right? The molecules that make up the reactants have to break apart, right? Those bonds need to break. So what we have here in, in this combustion of propane here, or in this calcium here reacting with water here, in this propane, all of a sudden, this C3H8 has to break, break apart. Uh, it's reacting with oxygen and these oxygen molecules also have to break apart. So the energy that is required to break these apart and reform, restructure to two completely different products, what's going to happen is heat is actually being released. So what happens is less energy is involved to break these bonds together, but a lot more energy is actually being released when these bonds actually form, right? And the same thing goes with this uh, reaction of calcium plus, um, plus water, right? This water molecule has to break apart, right? And form this hydrogen gas. Uh, and again, a lot more energy. So again, another exothermic. As we said, when we see heat or energy on this side of the, the, um, the reaction side, we know it's considered um, an exothermic reaction. And typical uh, enthalpy changes greater than those in a physical change can be anywhere from 10 to the power of 2 to 10 to the power of 4 kilojoules per mole. Okay, And even higher than that, 
are the nuclear changes. So a lot more change in enthalpy is found in typical nuclear reactions, right? Energy changes have to overcome the forces between the protons and neutrons um, in uh, the nucleus, right, of, uh, of an actual atom. So new atoms are actually going to form, right, with a different number of proton, different number of neutrons. So all of a sudden, we're converting this uranium. So this uranium is undergoing a nuclear decay and is pretty much releasing a helium proton and at the same time it is releasing heat right exothermic uh, so the um, enthalpy changes is pretty much a lot greater and notice here how much greater a lot more energy is available so there's a lot more energy right that change in enthalpy is greater at the nuclear um, estate 